And at midnight, there was a cry made. The bridegroom cometh. Go out and meet him. Then all those virgins arose, and they trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. That they were getting to the bottom of the oil. The wise answered, saying, No, lest there be not sufficient for us and you, but go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open up. But he answered, said, Verily, I say unto you, I know you not. The key word to all of that is verse 13, the first word, watch. Therefore, for you know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. So he was talking about the rapture, you see, when the Son of Man cometh. <clears throat> some should be taken, some should be left. It, it's, it's a big story. <clears throat> Jesus said in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24 and verse 4, Take heed that no man deceive you. You can be left behind because of deception. You've been deceived. You're not walking in the proper intelligence that you already have. And you were deceived. We, we read in 2 Peter 3 and 4, where they're crying out, Where? is the promise of his coming. Since the fathers are falling asleep, all things remain as they were. Isn't that an amazing situation? There are people sitting here and people that are watching me that as sure as you're here, you're going to miss the rapture. You haven't prepared for it. You don't live every day ready for it. And you're going to miss it, you see. Some shall be taken. Some shall be left. In Noah's day, there were more left than there were taken. They heard, they heard the Bible says Noah was a preacher of righteousness. For a hundred years, he preached righteousness. And at the final call, when God said, get inside, he and his family were the only ones that went in that ark. The animals had more sense than the humans did. When God told them to get to that ark, Noah did not have to round them up. They came. It's unbelievable. They came. They came in the right numbers, either by two or by seven. They came, and they took their place inside of God's provision for them. Some taken. Some left. This is the type of thing that happens constantly, you know. Uh, even in our livelihood, sometimes a loved one is taken and we're left behind. And it's a real jolt. Sometimes we didn't expect to be the one left behind. But you can survive that. This is the only one you cannot survive. This is it right here. You don't, you don't survive this. You don't say, who made a mistake? I'll start over. And there's no starting over in this game. In Noah's day, more were left than went. 
Jesus said, as it was in the days of Lot, so should it be in the day of the coming of the Son of Man. Only three survived in Lot's day. There might have been a million people living there together. Only three survivors. Lot and his two daughters. His wife started, she played the tambourine, but she didn't get very far because her love was for Sodom, for illicit sex. S married her own daughters to those Sodomites. Abraham would never have done that, you see. He wouldn't have lived in the long neighborhood anyway. Sometimes we wonder what happens to our kids. It's where you raise them at. It's a problem. You just didn't move to the right spot. Ever since I've been married, I refuse to live in a wrong neighborhood. I'd go live on an ash heap before I'd live in a wrong neighborhood. I refuse to let my children grow up with the devil's people out there screaming and yelling and cussing. You see, but I already live there. Well, find you a better place. Move out. No matter what kind of sacrifice it is, your children are worth more than just a house. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Only three survived. And the rest were left for the fiery brimstone that came down and burned those cities, dropped them to the bottom of the Dead Sea, and made it the most tormenting place on the first face of this earth because of sin. Sometimes we have to say goodbye to a daughter, to a son, to a mother, to a father, to an uncle, to an aunt, to a very precious one, husband or wife. But what we are discussing today is the last goodbye. <laughs> this is it. You will never see them again. It's an eternal separation. Some taken, some left. It was Jesus that said, there'd be two in the field working. One will go and one will stay. And the one that goes won't be running through the streets of heaven saying, oh my God, I lost, I, I, I lost my loved ones. No, that won't be up there. There's going to be total joy and total happiness whether you are there or not. Nobody up there is going to be bereaved because you didn't make it. If you don't make it, it's just you. That's it. Just you. Because in heaven, perfect bliss, perfect exuberance. And if you think you're going to spite somebody, it'll be your own nose and not somebody else. I, everything I've told you I wrote off early this morning. This thing wouldn't get out of my system. I hadn't started on the other side of the page yet. But what I want you to know is this. You've got the warning. For God's sake, make the rapture. And all the people said, we just want you to. Christ was speaking only, <laughs> that makes us interesting, to his disciples, you know. First chapter 24, right before, they came to him on the side of the Mount of Olives and they asked him these three questions. And then after he gave them some, uh, uh, you, you might say doctrine, then he went into stories. And this is one of the stories that Jesus told, one of his illustrated sermons that he talked about. So he wasn't talking to a crowd of unbelievers here. He was talking to people that ought to live right, that ought to make it, ought to make it. It's who he was talking to. So he was not talking to a world. He was talking to those that his own disciples that had been born again. And if there was a danger for them, there's a danger for any of us. Preachers, deacons, elders, Sunday school teachers. God wants us all to beware and to be ready. I know preachers that used to be ready, but they're not ready now. They don't live right. 
Last Friday, I took my... Let us pray. Father, let every eye be closed. Meditate just for a moment. How many of us at this very second know that you know inside of you you would not be afraid if Jesus broke the skies this moment and came for his bride. You'd be ready. You know you'd be ready. Would you raise your hand? Let me see it. Now be honest with your own self. You know that you'd be ready. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you. And I listen very carefully. How many are not quite sure, but you don't want to be like these foolish virgins here. You don't want to miss this event, but you're not quite sure. Would you raise your hand and keep it up for a moment, would you? All over. All over. You, you, thank you. Thank you. Now, you're talking to me. Some didn't raise your hands on either one, which makes me know you're not ready and you don't care. And you've just heard all these dramatic things that you have heard and you haven't been touched yet. I have bad news for you. You possibly will never be touched more than you are touched right now.